Your PC is a cesspool of dust bunnies and garbage, just like my kid's PC is. I built this for him in 2019 when we moved back to the United States and it has not been clean since. So we're gonna go with today's video sponsor, Recibi, and we're gonna make sure that we actually deep clean this PC. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how you can go about deep cleaning your own PC. And hopefully my kids watch this video as well. He's at camp this week. I'm doing this to him as a favor. Hopefully uh, we won't have to actually do this for him in the future and he can become self-sustainable thanks to today's video sponsor and the Recibi R3 Pro. I'm gonna go over the features as we do this video, but it's gonna be a very integral part of actually cleaning out what doesn't seem to be a very dirty computer on the outside, but that's because it's a very dark case. But hiding under the cables and just this plastic panel right here is the filthiest, not the filthiest, I've seen worse, but a very filthy computer. So what you're gonna need to deep clean your PC, number one, a way to get rid of all of the dust. Now, typically what people have used are cans of compressed air, which is number one, terrible for the environment. Number two, very expensive. They're like 10 bucks a can sometimes, very not economically friendly. And then number three, you can't actually reuse them. They're once off. I mean, once the can's empty, they're empty, which is why I'm so excited to bring to you the R3 Pro because this is a 90 watt, air blower capable of handling things like PCs and making sure that you get all of the dust out. The motor in here spins at up to 9,000 RPM, which it'll last 25 minutes for, but then you can also run it at 7,000 RPM for 30 minutes or 5,000 RPM for 40 minutes. So great battery life, rechargeable so that you can have multiple uses and you can use it for things like cleaning out your car as well, especially since it comes with a brush accessory and it has a USB type C plug port so that you can recharge it and use it for a very long time. This actually makes so much more sense than buying those air dusters financially, as well as environmentally, and just sense wise. On top of the air duster, you are gonna need a few other things. Isopropyl alcohol is a very good thing to have. A screwdriver just makes sense for deconstructing a few things, some paper towels, and then some sort of window cleaner for cleaning your side panel as well. And in case you want to repaste your CPU or your graphics card, having some additional thermal paste will actually help out, which we're gonna go through in this video, but it might not be necessary if your PC is new. Because you wanna go through the deep cleaning process of your PC every time it's dirty. I mean, giving it a good look over once every few months to make sure that there's not too much dust buildup is good for you, especially considering the fact that too much dust could lead to worse airflow, higher temperatures, having your fans spin at higher RPM, potentially leading to burnout, or even getting stuck in certain places that they shouldn't be and creating some issues that way. So having a clean PC should be a sign of pride and I should be a better father and make sure my kids clean their PCs more often. So first step is actually getting your computer open and taking off the side panels. This is where the screwdriver is gonna come in handy. Now you could choose to clean the side panel at this point, but I find that I end up touching it and moving it around in the process of actually deep cleaning my PC. So I think it's best save for last to actually clean this. And especially on this Q300L case by Cooler Master, this is just a piece of plastic. It's not tempered glass. It scratches real easy. This is gonna be dirty no matter what. So I'll, I'll save that for last. What we have in here is the worst offenders of actual dust, especially one of the things you need to look out for is your power supply basement. What you find here is that the intake of the power supply does accumulate dust quite heavily. So taking out the dust filters is where the Recibi is gonna come in handy very early on. You can start doing this at the very beginning. And honestly, quickest way to get this done, in case you're just looking to give it a good once over, is to take off all of the dust panels blow them out individually, and then blow out the individual components in here, not taking anything out, and then just close it up. But we're gonna be going a little bit extra beyond that today. But you can see right here, we have the very dusty dust filter from the power supply basement. This is exactly what they're designed for. You want to see this. And uh, typically it'd be good to like do this over a trash can where like you could collect the dust, but we're just gonna do it here on the set. Oh, that's not even full speed. It sounds so loud. Oh, that was the big, that was baby speed that it starts up at. Okay, so this is the 
5,000 RPM. This is the 7,000. And then this is the 9,000. Finally, I'm a beautiful butterfly. That's awesome. So these air dusters are very good for getting the big dust bunnies and making sure that you do a good job of cleaning it up. But you can still see there is some residue. So this is where cleaning things with a paper towel and isopropyl alcohol will allow you to make sure you get that deep clean done and make sure that it's sparkly brand new, good as freshness. It appears to be there's some chocolate in here and air duster is never gonna get chocolate. I don't know why there's chocolate on the power supply intake, but kids, all right, we're gonna set that panel off to the side. We do have these front filters as well. There's more chocolate. There's chocolate all over this computer. My chocolate. I can't blame them. I snack while I game too. Small little screwdriver to poke out the chocolate holes as one does in a computer situation. That's most of the chocolate. Yeah, this one looks mostly clean. We're good there. Now let's blow off all the chocolate. <laughs> and all of the plastic doodads that we need. Panels are done. Now let's get on to the main event, the computer right here. You can, I don't know if you can see it, but the dust is swirling all about everywhere. And we could, again, as I mentioned, come in with the air duster and just create a swirl of dust. And that will get you about 80% of the way there. If you can see the table right now, I'm not sure how well it's showing up on camera, but most of the dust that the big pieces of dust are out. So if you're just looking for a quick clean, the air duster is gonna do really well, but that's not the goal of what we have here today. We wanna make sure that this is almost back to new, which is gonna require us to disassemble the component. So it's almost like building a PC in reverse. You're gonna need to take out the graphics card, you're gonna need to take out the RAM and the power supply in order to make sure that you have access to all of the nooks and crannies that will give you the best clean possible. So we're gonna start off with the graphics card because this tends to be a very dirty component with the fans that it'll have. Now, again, we could just blow this bad boy out. But there's no guarantee that it's super clean. So we're gonna disassemble it. And as you can see here, we've got Phillips screws at the back for us to take this boy apart. Now, what you need to worry about most when it comes to cleaning a computer is static electricity. It can actually harm components, although you would need to generate quite a bit with modern PC components in order to do any real damage. So if you feel safer using an anti-static wrist strap, you can go ahead and do that, ground yourself before working on components. So taking off the screws on the back panel allows us to open up the graphics card. And typically what you find is that a fan or a fan plus RGB header is plugged in and you want to unplug that prior to working on anything. So taking the heatsink off of the graphics card is step one, but then you can go a step further by disassembling the heatsink from the graphics card shroud. So typically it's a few screws holding down the heatsink to the fan shroud. You can usually see on the actual heatsink where the fan shroud has left the dust imprints, usually in the shape of a fan on here. So to get that extra special clean, you just blow this bad boy out. And it's very simple to get this done because it's usually just lined up pieces of aluminum that lend themselves to actually having air pass through them because they're made for fans. And then you can also blow out the underside of the fans on the GPU shroud itself. And then if you also feel so inclined, you could give it a good rub down with isopropyl alcohol. But I do think that this is looking way better than it was previously. Now, also here can be the step where you repaste your GPU. And this is where the isopropyl alcohol does come in handy because cleaning up thermal paste that is currently on your cooler is absolutely necessary. So just getting all of that off there to make sure that we have a clean setup for the actual heatsink 
and then cleaning up the actual GPU die here as well. Now, normally I'm not too worried about cleaning up all of the thermal paste, especially considering the fact that I'm going to put more on here and then it's just gonna splooge out any everywhere anyways. But in case you wanna do a deep cleaning job, the best way to do that is to get some Q-tips or potentially even use some very fine tips tweezers like I have right here and ever so gently scrape around the sides to make sure that you're getting every last bit off of the actual GPU die. With thermal paste in hand, you just reapply it to the die, usually a pea size amount. Now you wanna go in reverse order of what you just accomplished, putting the heat sink back on the fan shroud and then reassembling it back onto the actual GPU. So make sure to plug the fan back in so that it can actually cool the GPU down and then line up the holes so that you can apply tension to get the thermal paste squished over that die. And like tightening anything, you wanna make sure that you're doing a cross to get an even spread to distribute the pressure appropriately. Some graphics cards actually might come with a back plate, which where is where the dust might accumulate. And that's a lot easier to clean off because there's no sensitive electronics on the back of a back plate typically. With us, we have a bare PCB right here, which makes the cleaning operation a little bit more delicate, again, for static electricity reasons to make sure that we're not gonna be shorting out any components. But that's one of the beauties of isopropyl alcohol in cleaning this because it dries effectively, typically makes it so that there's no lasting liquids that are actually gonna short out any components. I uh, just gotta make sure that the paper towel doesn't shred. So finding something, maybe even just a Q-tip to get into the finer areas to clean off the PCB can help you. And then just one little last blast to make sure that all of the dust in our workspace as well as on the GPU are all gone. Coming back to the rest of the PC, you can tackle this in quite a few orders. You can start by taking out the power supply and cleaning down in this basement area. You can take out the motherboard and start cleaning that. I'm gonna start by unplugging all of the cables just to make sure that we have easy access to all of the components. So taking the motherboard out of the PC is probably gonna give us the best place to clean it. Now, typically you wanna set your motherboard on a cardboard box in order to help with that anti-static discharge to make sure you're not gonna mess with it. So taking out the RAM, we can see that this RAM is actually very dirty. And this is simple to clean. You just wipe it off with a paper towel, get that heat sink nice and clean. For the slots, you might want to actually use an air duster to clean that off. Now cleaning out the CPU cooler, should happen before you clean off the rest of the motherboard so that you don't continue to get dust on the motherboard, especially once you reinstall the CPU cooler. So now when you're, especially when you're dealing with AM4 CPUs or the modern Ryzen chips, not the upcoming ones, you're gonna wanna make sure that you give your CPU cooler a little twist because typically if you pull it straight out, the CPU is gonna come out with it. You wanna make sure that you're twisting the thermal paste to make sure that the CPU actually doesn't come out with the cooler just like so. Now this CPU definitely needs to be repasted. That is not a lot of thermal paste, but you can see that there is quite a bit of dust buildup, especially around the actual mounting screw section. So we wanna clean that off as well as the CPU. Again, isopropyl alcohol is your friend for cleaning off thermal paste. So with the CPU clean, I'm gonna take it out of the socket just to make sure that we don't have anything left in the motherboard to clean up. Blow it off with the duster one more time. You need to take extra special care to make sure you get in between slots like the RAM slots and then also down here by the PCI Express slots because dust can hide in there quite a bit. Now there is a little bit of dust remaining here on the CPU cooler section as well as on the heatsink over here, which again, I'm just gonna clean off with some isopropyl alcohol to make sure that we get it all nice and shiny again. This is where high quality paper towels come in handy because they don't tear as easily and if you get paper towel tearing shreds all over your computer. It actually kind of makes the situation worse. Now with the motherboard clean, I'm gonna move on to the CPU cooler. So there's the obvious dirt on the CPU cooler, which is the thermal paste, which can be cleaned off with a paper towel and some isopropyl alcohol. So now you can get thermal paste or pieces of paper towels stuck in the cracks around this cooler. So just either go gentle or use tweezers to clean it up afterwards. So if you're using a third party cooler, you're gonna have a different solution than what we're gonna have right now. But AMD stock coolers do allow you to disassemble the fan from the heatsink on the cooler, making it so that you can actually clean it out. It's just four screws at each of the corners. And you can see why we wanna do that. 
with all of that dust on the cooler right here. You can see the shape of the fan blades, but there is some decent amount of dust bunnies up in here, like right there. Air Duster, Recibi coming to the rescue. And that's why disassembling your PC still is a good idea if you're trying to clean it. I blew out that computer and it looked like it was mostly clean, but hiding under the surface on the heatsink is a lot of nastiness. So just coming in with some isopropyl alcohol to clean off these fins. And we are a lot cleaner than we were before. Now let me get some of that paper towel dust out. And then let's take a look on the underside of the cooler. And yes, indeed, there is still dust back here. You can still see that there is a little bit of dust buildup on the underside of the fan blades. So coming in and just giving those a good wipe down will help out with this situation. There's a lot more dirt hiding under the surfaces than you would think, which is why it's important to go through and get at it. So now all we do is reconstruct the cooler, put it back on, making sure the AMD logo is vertically oriented. So the motherboard, the CPU, CPU cooler, and RAM are done, which leaves us typically with just a couple of components. Mostly it's the case and the power supply. And if you have a modular power supply, this is likely gonna be easier. This one isn't modular, so I have to kind of work with the cables already being routed. So I'm not gonna go 100% on the deep clean here, but in case you wanna clean your cables, which likely aren't the filthiest part, you can go ahead and do so that's your desire. So we can see from the power supply in here that there, even with the dust filter, which was probably the dustiest part, there is tons of dust in here. Now, I'm not going to disassemble the power supply in order to access all of the components on the inside because number one, that is a very dangerous task. You don't wanna accidentally bridge a capacitor that is storing a charge and then somehow either blow up your power supply or yourself. It's a dangerous thing to deconstruct power supplies if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm not touching it in this guide. So I'm gonna blow all of the dust in here, making sure to get through all of the slots. And then also underneath where the power supply was resting on the inside, just giving a good clean to make sure there's no dust sitting where we're gonna replace the power supply. So now I'm gonna replace the power supply and just keep it down there because once again, the cables have already been managed and I don't wanna really go through the effort of remanaging them. So some other places the dust bunnies can be hiding is on the back panel of your computer. So we're gonna go to that very last before we start reinstalling things and making sure that everything is nicely put back together in a very clean fashion. But you can even see on these rubber tips right here that there is some dust. So we're gonna make sure to wipe that off with the isopropyl alcohol before we put them back in. And just like I thought, there's a spare screw in here for some reason a ton of hair right here and a lot of dust. Once again, just because your computer is surface clean doesn't make it actually clean. And let's R3 Pro this bad boy. Whoa! <laughs> I did not think there were that big pieces of dust back there. <laughs> oh, there's a lot. Oh man, like especially in this SATA cable nest. That was some of the most dust that I've seen in this entire cleaning section. So we're not gonna take the cables out like I mentioned, but we will put some isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel and just give the cables a good wipe down to make sure we're getting the dust out of the nooks and crannies on those. So I was actually mistaken. I said that we were gonna work on the back panel last, but actually we should take out the one fan that's in my son's computer for whatever bad dad reason I have for only giving him an exhaust fan. Uh, and we're gonna disassemble that and then clean the fan and then put it back in because that will be the last thing. Now, most PCs typically have two fans, at least one intake and one exhaust. So this might be a double effort for you, but considering the fact that I neglected my oldest in the assembly of his PC, uh, this is actually not too bad. So again, just wiping down the backside of the fans with isopropyl alcohol to make sure that they're clean, making sure to not use too much pressure because you could potentially snap the fan blades if you have really strong fingers like a good gamer would. And then just wiping down the section where the fan sat because there typically is a lot of dust in there and you can actually see it flying up and that put more dust on the inside, yay. 
out. Let's get it out. Get rid of the dust. So now it's honestly just a matter of reassembling the computer like you would be doing during the normal build process. But there are a few things you need to pay extra special attention to that tend to get overlooked, especially when you're reassembling a computer. Number one is going to be making sure that all of the cables are reconnected, such as the fan cable or the front IO in order to make sure that the power button still works because the amount of stories that I've heard of somebody who's cleaned their PC and then are unable to turn it on uh, typically results from neglecting things like the power button reinstallation, but then also potentially even making sure that the RAM is reseated properly. Or potentially your motherboard actually needs to train your RAM and you need to start with only installing one stick. So now that that's clean, let's move that off to the side and start with reassembling the motherboard with the CPU, some thermal paste, the CPU cooler, and then making sure that both of the RAM sticks are installed. Again, training RAM might be necessary, so install one stick, boot up your PC, then install the second stick. And then if that works and you have more than two sticks, you can continue from that point forward. But everything is looking cleaner at this point. I'm actually really happy with how easily this was capable of being disassembled. And now we can actually move forward with making sure my son has a clean PC. RAM gets reinstalled. We're gonna plug the motherboard back in, probably not on top of the R3 Pro box. IO shield reinstalled to try to help with the dust intake later on. Now that the motherboard, CPU, RAM have all been reinstalled, it's time for the graphics card to be plugged back in. So make sure to screw it in, make sure you apply the power cable. And one of the things that I forgot to do was actually clean off the back panel. There's still, there's a hair right, oh, it fell off, but we're just gonna, we're gonna blow it off. I'm also gonna give a good isopropyl alcohol wipe down to the outside of the steel here, just to make sure that it's cleaned up as much as possible. This is probably the hardest part to make sure it looks aesthetically pleasing, especially if you have any nicks, dings, scratches, anything like that, uh, like we have here, because kicking computers is a thing children do. That is looking a lot better than we were at the very beginning, not only because we have the R3 Pro from Recibi in order to help clean out the dust, but we took the extra time to get into the nooks and crannies and make sure that it was all dusted off. And then lastly, what I mentioned I was going to do last is to clean off the side panel because I knew that I was just gonna create a mess during this entire thing. And so typically you wanna have a window cleaner that has a functional nozzle. <laughs> I don't have that. Make sure you're also not getting this liquid on your PC because unlike isopropyl alcohol, uh, it will stick around and it will cause damage. So just giving this a good wipe down, there are some scratches built into the acrylic. It's not going to look brand new. That's just the nature of these cheap acrylic side panels. They're going to look worse as time goes on, but wiping them down, helping to make sure that there's at least no dust and they're looking their best self. But yeah, there's a lot of nicks and scratches on the side panel that I'm just not gonna be able to clear off. So the last step in any deep clean is to plug your computer back in before you put the side panel back on and then make sure it still works. Fans come on, no problem. Now it's just a matter of making sure that we get display out in a post situation. And we're good to go. We're booting back into Windows. Everything is good. And I wanna take a second to again, thank today's video sponsor, Recibi with their R3 Pro air duster. You should check this out, not only for your PC, but if you want to clean out your car, any sort of portable cleaning setup that you want to have a powerful air blaster for, you can absolutely do that. It's cordless, powerful, portable. It goes up to 9,000 RPM, can last up to 40 minutes, charges in four hours with a USB-C type charger, has a 7,500 milliamp hour battery, and has a 90 watt power output. This R3 Pro, clean my son's computer, it can clean yours as well. Check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Receive for sponsoring today's video.